What up, what up, investors? It's your boy Dio. Welcome to Frontline Investment, where I talk about bio and genomics on a daily basis. From Sunday to Sunday, I try to post at least one video. If you would love to learn more about bio and genomics, this channel is for you, okay? Feel free to subscribe to this channel, join other members of bio and genomics, those that are also invested in this company, and come here on a daily basis to learn more about their investment in this company. Whatever I show you in this video is just for educational purpose only. The financial market is a very dangerous place and you can lose a lot of money. Always do your own due diligence. Don't sue me, bro. Let's get to it. So I'm going to make this video as fast as possible. Since today is Saturday, I just want to share a little bit of details with you guys, you know, between, you know, Hi and, and Simon, Akinvest analyst. We had a conversation on Twitter, a brief conversation, and um, I would love to share with you guys my opinion on what Simon said about optical genome mapping, which of course means bio nanogenomics, since we are the only company out there with a working product, okay? So, of course, he refused to mention BNGO. He refused to mention bio nanogenomics. He only mentioned OGM, optical genome mapping, in uh, most of all of his statements, I would say so. In this video, I am going to be uh, answering some of Simon's question, okay? Because he made some, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say questions, he made some points about optical genome mapping and where he believes the technology is going and why he believes OGM is nothing serious, okay? He believes the market opportunity of OGM, cytogenetics, is very small. So, in this video, I am going to be going through the statement that Simon uh, made most recently about OGM and um let me make this bigger and then um i am going to be sharing with you guys you know from what i have learned so far after making about 414 videos you know only about optical genome mapping learning about this company about this technology on a daily basis since last year january 12th that is when i posted my first video and since then i have posted over 400 videos on this topic alone so um with this from this experience I am going to be telling you guys what I think. Um, I mean, any point that I believe Simon, you know, is wrong, I'm going to share it with you guys. So let's get it um, started with. Now, this is the link that I posted. Okay, I made a video about Simon where he said he believes OGM is a terrific technology. And then Nick came on board and um, he tagged Simon. Okay, he was asking, I think he is the on the person that asked Simon some questions and um, he's the reason why I made this first um, video. So he came on board and he asked, um, he tagged Simon, okay, and then, you know, he wrote another thread under this um, tweet. Then Simon came on board and, uh, and this is what happened, okay, so let's just start. I made already, I highlighted, you know, some points that I would love to discuss with you guys, you know, to share some knowledge from my own experience about what OGM is or NGS and so on and so forth. Now, Simon came on board and said, I'm not addressed at you. So, obviously, he was referring to me. Then, first, he said he's, you know, he's not a fan of being used in videos like this. But he said, though, he guess um, it is fair use. Okay. Now, he continues. He said, for the record, I have always had the opinion that OGM is a great technology. Okay. And that um, will gain adoption within cytogenetics okay now the point simon is trying to make of course this is not his first time of trying to you know uh, emphasize that ogm is only going to exist in the cytogenetics you know industry that ogm will never you know come out from the cytogenetics industry i mean nobody's arguing about that of course he's always trying to you know talk down ogm trying to make ogm look like a um 100 million us dollars market opportunity so that you guys can you know um believe pack bio which of course is into sequencing a company that um Archivest is heavily invested into okay he wants to make you guys believe pack bio is bigger than ogm but of course that is not um why we are here today now let's continue now simon made some statements he said um he thinks cyto is a relatively small market okay you guys can see right here let me just make it bigger so he said um he believes cyto is a relatively small market and um so i mean i disagree with this so that's why i'm picking i'm putting it red or pink 
Saito is not a relatively small market, okay? Perhaps he's talking about in comparison with sequencing. But of course, this guy is going to make sure he's going to make use of words that is going to, you know, make him sound smarter, make him um sound like the 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 uh, uh, this the smartest person in the room so that you guys can believe um um, Pack Bio, for example, is you know superior whenever it comes to whatever genome analysis and so on and so forth. So he continues, he said, with a lot of entrenched, well capitalized competitors. Now, this is another wrong statement, okay? I mean, if he said with a lot of entrenched, well capitalized competitors, I would love Simon, you know, to tell us who are the competitors of OGM, of bio-nanogenomics, which company out there is competing with bio-nanogenomics whenever it comes to structural variation detection, no company is out there producing any device, any diagnostic device or research use, purpose use only device like the Sapphire that is able to analyze genomes all the way from 500 base pairs to millions of base pairs. No company out there is doing this, okay? Now we have some companies the only company i can you know mention is um oxford nanopore okay and oxford nanopore is more or less into sequencing not of course it's not into optical genome mapping and in my opinion you know oxford nanopore is also not able to do what ogm sapphire device is able to do because we have uh, you know during the symposium we had an expert that was using oxford nanopore and ogm in uh you know in um He's using these two technology, you know, to complement each other. And then this person said OGM was able to detect what Oxford Nanopore was unable to detect. Okay, I made a tweet about it last week. Now, I don't know what he meant, but what this guy is talking about when he said with a lot of entrenched, well-capitalized competitors, you know, whenever it comes to cancer detection, solid tumor, you know, we are talking about OGM optical genome mapping okay because you know cancer is a structural variation disease like i said and OGM is the best technology out there whenever you want to detect what is going on in the genome now he continues he said i am also very against the idea that OGM is competitive with sequencing technology of course this is a correct okay we are not in competition with sequencing technology they are into something else we are into something else entirely. Whenever you come to you talking about rare genetic disease, MM malignancies, that is where we are, okay, OGM. But if you want to do DNA sequencing, you know, if you want to sequence um a virus, for example, you know, if you want to find, you know, some blah, 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 you go to optical, you, you go to next generation sequence, you go to, you know, all this pack bio, Illumina and so on and so forth. But whenever you want to find what is wrong with the genome, rare genetic disease, you know, inherited diseases and so on and so forth, you need to map the genome. That's where OGM comes in. Okay. Now, he continues, he said, um, I have been firm on those two things also for a long time. Of course, you know, he's a pack bio believer. Now, let's continue. Um, let me see. I think he has, um, there is also one more thing I would love to share with you guys. Now, let's go to this tweet, okay? Because this is where he was, you know, having a conversation with Nick. And he made some points that I don't, you know, completely agree with. Let me refresh this so that we can, um, I think I highlighted, okay, so I highlighted some point already. Now, um i'm going to start from the beginning so here simon said he um i have also got a pretty good grip on where pack biotech is going which makes the incursion even less concerning so of course he's a pack bio fans okay if you guys notice simon didn't mention bio nanogenomics or bngo he was just mentioning ogm and he was praising the technology the ogm technology i think he's trying to avoid you know mentioning the company behind this ogm technology i don't know why so he said um so nick asked uh he asked simon a question he said is there any update on or on thoughts about bio nanogenomics and their tech okay now simon came in and said i think ogm is a terrific technology that should continue to make waves within the cytogenetics world that is what he is within the cytogenetics world guys he loves making that statement so he continues he said on um, the evidence is building that ogm can replace traditional cytogenetics method of course that is why we are here okay we want to replace all this old method of analyzing genomes okay we want to replace karyotyping. We want to replace fish. We want to replace microarray and southern bloat. 
fish is something that i believe we are already replacing okay you guys if you watch the symposium i also posted a video about it last week sunday i posted two videos you know where we have the panelists discussing on the um the technology of ogm and ngs they discussed solid two more they discussed why they believe ogm is going to replace all the old technologies i mean i am not making all this all these things up okay these are some um, things that experts are saying about you know optical genome mapping now he continues he said but um i am certainly not on the belief it will replace ngs or lr of course ogm is not here to replace ngs or lrs but what the argument is about is if simon goes around saying that long sequencing technology is superior okay to detect structural variation or whatever you want to call it i mean sequencing cancer is not you know is this is a structural variation disease and only ogm bio nanogenomics is able to map this you know base pairs from 500,000 into the millions not lrs okay perhaps some technologies are out there lrs could do it but it's going to be expensive and it's going to be conversion is going to be you know labor intensive it's going to take a lot of time it's going to take them weeks if not months before they can come to a conclusion but meanwhile we have ogm you know that is able to reduce all these things you know some things that take like two weeks to analyze ogm is going to reduce it to like four days and then we saw um there was a tweet out there from a um a doctor one of ogm users sapphire user that said you know something that took fis ish years to analyze OGM was able to do it within days. So he went ahead and said, OGM doesn't convey sequence information and as such would miss most variant cause. I mean, of course, if you want to analyze, you know, genomes, you know, if you want to analyze, if you want to talk about the base pairs below 500, that's where sequencing technology comes in and outperform optical genome mapping, bio nanogenomic sapphire. But if you want to go above 500, okay, that's where OGM is. So I don't know what he meant by OGM doesn't convey sequence information. Of course, OGM doesn't have sequencing information because OGM is more or less, you know, you know, you are viewing the forest from above. You can see the map, the location of each area. Meanwhile, the sequence technology goes into the forest and show you the uh, the trees, you know, and uh, more details about the trees and so on and so forth. So now um, Nick came back and said, I do think the com uh, combination of both NGS and OGM is very strong. Do you agree? Now, uh, Simon came back again, you know, this another negative Co uh, comment he made. He said, technically, it is helpful for more comprehensive genome analysis. But on balance, I think it is both harder to scale and worse performing than just using LRS. I mean, I don't know what he's talking about here that, you know, um, it's, it's, it is harder to scale and worse performing than LR, just using, what he's trying to say is, scientists don't need to use optical genome mapping. They just need to use long sequencing from PacBio. And we have a lot of scientists out there that are already, you know, replacing their PacBio devices, you know, with optical genome mapping and Illumina. Okay, some of them are combining Illumina with OGM with the Sapphire device. Some are combining uh, Sapphire device with devices from Oxford Nanopore. So, He's just trying to sell PacBio. I mean, PacBio is into something else entirely. If you want to detect what is wrong in your genome, if it's cancer, solid tumor, if you want the best answer, you need optical genome mapping. That is just a fact. Okay, this is from the experts that are presently using all these technologies. Okay, in parallel. So Simon said, currently I view OGM's main competition to be incumbent providers of cytogenetics technology not any sequencing companies i mean sequencing companies that claim they are able to you know sequence a dna or genome and um tell you what is wrong with it whenever you're looking for answers in terms of solid tumor i mean that is bs okay only ogm is capable of doing it so this is another wrong statement um from him okay let me just go back this in my opinion is a wrong statement from simon okay sequencing is into something else ogm is into something else you know we are operating in this base pair they operate in this base pair so if you are looking for answers okay you can combine these two technologies together if you use one you are going to miss one if you if you are looking for something above 500 base pairs and you want the best answer you use ogm it's, it is as simple as that if you are looking for something you know let's say below um 100 base pair 
you can use illumina okay and of course that's another topic entirely so um and this gentleman right here i love what he said he said ngs has its space in the molecular genetics world for sure but i do see classical cytogenetics and fish method methodologies being replaced by ogm with its faster turnaround time and price point of course i don't know who this person is karim oh you see this person is a cancer genetics uh, ml um, blah 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 writer author interest in health admin ai privacy i don't know who this person is but this is a wonderful comment okay and i also saw one comment from him somewhere above here so this person is he said not only in the cytogenetics world but in the fish and ngs world as well so he was referring to i think ogm is a terrific technology and should be making waves in within the cytogenetics world so this person also you know um taku um he tried to you know defend ogm by by trying to educate simon that ogm can replace fish and um and ngs world as well ogm can replace all three testing platforms Depending on what is being examined at a cost-effective price, biggest competitor, I think, would be Illumina. Of course, Illumina is not competing with OGM because they don't see what we are able to see. But Illumina, you know, they can be used. They are being used right now, like, um, for example, from Praxis Genomics, they are uh, presently using Illumina plus optical genome mapping. I, I believe Augusta University is also using Illumina plus, you know, um, Sapphire device from Bio Nano Genomics. So I think that's where I'm going to end this video. I hope on um, this answers Simon question. I'm going to upload this video and I'm going to tag, tag him. Hopefully he's going to watch it and perhaps I'm going to come back again and make another video about this topic. I mean, have a wonderful weekend, guys. I remember your boy Dio. This is from Cla. Ciao, ciao.